Welcome back to Truck Tech, everyone. It's a new week and we have a new show for you. Excited today because we're going to start with a question, and that is how soon are we going to see autonomous trucks on the roads here in the U.S.? Could be as soon as next year if we listen to what we've heard from Too Simple and from Aurora. But believe it or not, and maybe you know this, they're already on the road. That is, yard dogs are on the road, and this is something that a technology that is coming to us from Outrider is making possible. And our guest today is going to be Andrew Smith, the founder and CEO of Outrider. We'll talk to him in just a minute after a few headlines. Now, we may know that uh, we, we know that Too Simple decided sort of surprisingly to stay in Asia, that is to keep its China operations, which is kind of a surprise move after spending a couple of years suggesting they were going to spin those off. Now we may be seeing why they're doing it, because they're entering a test run in Japan with their level four uh, trucks, there's still safety drivers in them. But by 2026, Too Simple will be testing autonomous trucks in Japan as well as a test, uh, excuse me, an actual commercial run that they're planning here in the U.S. late next year. So this is one indication that Too Simple has global ambitions still just beyond just here in the U.S. On the other end of autonomous trucking, Plus is continuing to add to its number of partnerships that it has uh, in the sort of level two or automated driving space. Uh, Plus has a level four system for uh, autonomous trucking, but it operates at, at what it calls level two plus plus. Go ahead and say that quickly. Essentially, what they're doing is they are adding autonomous features to it to their trucks as they move it closer and closer to driver out but the drivers are still in there and actually getting a pretty nice ride out of it because of some of the technologies the most recent being luminar's long-range lidar which will uh which will project out to 2,000 feet uh, in terms of obstacles that might be in the road. Uh, Plus already uses Alster LiDAR for, to see what's going on closer to the truck itself. We are wondering, maybe you're wondering, just how many electric trucks are on the road out there? Well, you don't have to guess because CalSTAR is going to tell us. They've uh, they've done the math for us, and the number as of December 2022 was 5,483 medium and heavy duty trucks that are that are now on the roads. And interestingly, six out of ten of those are in the states that have adopted California's advanced clean truck rule. A uh, little bit of pressure to make moves there. Uh, of course, we have the clean fleet rule that followed on that. And so we'll see if these numbers continue to go up. And they will, especially in the medium duty space uh, over the coming months. Okay, that's it for headlines. Let's welcome Andrew Smith. Andrew, prior to fi- founding Outrider five and a half years ago, uh, founded a company called ATD Dynamics, uh, which was a provider of semi-trailer vehicle automation technology. Uh, That business was acquired by Semco in 2015, allowing Andrew to move on to to Outrider. He's also still involved as an advisor to Extreme Trucking, which is a design and engineering company that is focused on commercial hardware and fuel-saving dynamics for commercial vehicles. It is great, Andrew. Welcome to Truck Tech. Alan, always good to uh, be with you here. Well, you know, we we do run into each other from time to time. We've actually gotten a chance to meet in person, which was, I think that was a manifest, if I'm not mistaken, and, and I had a chance to chat a little bit there. And at the time that the show was even newer than uh, newer then than it is now. And so I said, hey, why don't you come on the show? You said, I'd love to. And so here we are. So it's it's great to have you. I, I think it's really important, though, Andrew, before we jump in, that, that people get a sense of what Outrider is, because if they're like me, and I've obviously written about it a few times, they, they may not understand just what you're up to. So could you kind of take us through it and help the audience understand what you're doing? Absolutely. So distribution yards are these critical linkages in the global supply chain. Essentially, a a, a yard is this environment between the -the over-the-road trucking transportation and everything that happens inside warehouses or production facility. And literally billions and billions of tons of freight on an annual basis pass through these yards. And the efficiency of these yards have a major impact on the rest of the supply chain. Uh, My background with these yards was, uh, you mentioned I worked with aerodynamics technology in the transportation space in the past. I had a lot of time and I spent a lot of time seeing these yard trucks or these specific vehicles moving trailers within yards. 
sitting around idling diesel fuel inefficiently, drivers leaning out the window looking for trailers, uh, and doing very repetitive manual tasks in this pretty harsh, dangerous environment. And uh, back several years ago, I got invited to be part of some of the early autonomous vehicle programs. And as I did my research, I had this realization that yards were a perfect near-term opportunity for autonomy. So what Outrider does is we automate uh, the yard environment, autonomous yard operations, as we call it. And that's automating everything that occurs between the warehouse door and over the road transportation. So that is a good explanation. You know, I can think of at least four things that I want to get into in terms of specifics that we've talked about and have a chance to, to write about here. But one of the things or one of your guiding principles is this idea of zero emissions, right? And and I think, you know, the importance of coming together electrification and autonomy. We use at least some RNG V trucks, which are EV uh, yard dogs. I'll just call them that straight out, uh, you know, in your operations. Talk a little bit, if you would, about the, the importance of the zero emission part of things, because you talk about dirty and dangerous. That is a distribution yard, right? Uh, absolutely. So Outriders uh, was founded from day one uh, with the mission of both demonstrating the responsible deployment of autonomy uh, but just as importantly, to uh, accelerate the rapid adoption of zero emission vehicle technology. Uh, one way to think about it is it's very exciting that uh, we can have same day delivery of, of the things we eat, wear or, or use. Uh, but nobody wants that in a 115 degree heat dome uh, sponsored by fossil fuel burning unnecessarily. So Outrider from day one put its autonomous uh, pl autonomous software on top of electric vehicle platforms. And the reality is uh, when I think about starting a company, I always think about what's gonna be the new standard in the industry, the new normal. Um, and it's totally clear that the new normal for distribution yard activity is both autonomous and electric. The electric vehicle platform uh, does not require on-site fueling. You get rid of the complexity of bringing diesel fuel on-site. Uh, you get rid of the need for diesel treatments. You reduce emissions among the that is close to the warehouse workers that are open and shutting the dock doors. <clears throat> you have a more stable platform for the autonomy, um, and you build resiliency in the supply chain. You're not uh, you, your your yard operations are not at the whim of of uh, price fluctuations in oil, and you've got to simply you get rid of all the complexity of a, of a of a diesel engine with a lot simpler and reliable electric vehicle platform. So, EVs are coming. Autonomy is going to accelerate them because of the joint benefits of, of the autonomy with the electric together. You know, we're not. I, I think there was one example. It wasn't complete, but there was one example that Kodiak showed at uh, at the recent uh, uh, Act Expo, uh, where you know they took a, essentially a day cab and uh, uh, you know from from uh, from Peterbilt, and they said, "Hey, you know what? We're going to put a time system on here, and we're going to make an electric truck, maybe the first, And it was a claim that you could back up the first Class Eight autonomous truck. Now, when you look closely, it wasn't quite there yet, but the fact is, it was a nice try. It was certainly worth a press release. Uh, and I think, I, I think you know, we are getting there. And I, it feels like maybe it's going to be second generation for some of the Class 8 uh, trucks before you do see a, an electric version. But certainly in California, if, if not the other states that have adopted it, they're not going to allow diesel autonomy. Well, and I can tell you the, uh, the, the first Class 8 yard track, truck that's fully autonomous is one that Outrider has been running now for several years. So, um, yeah, it's really exciting to see. The other, the other thing to think about is, uh, again, electric is going to be in these shorter haul applications. Well, what's the, the absolute ideal short haul application? It's driving trailers to and from parking spots where over the road drivers drop them off to a dock door. There is no range, range anxiety with a electric yard truck uh, because you've got the ability to plug into the power that's already in place for the distribution center. Um, so yeah, you know, Alan, I think, uh, uh, again, just um, touching on the, the future of electric and autonomy, uh, we can now have our, our youngest person to date is a two-year-old, the, the child of one of our engineers, with the click of one button can dispatch multiple electric vehicles to move around 53-foot, 40,000-pound trailers with centimeter accuracy, uh, all powered by electricity that, as we know, can be powered by wind or solar, et cetera. Yeah, let's let's be real clear, and you have to clarify for us. These are not teleop by a two-year-old or anybody else. This is true autonomy. That that is correct. So that is a two-year-old pressing a button and then fully autonomous. And 
uh, uh, it's, it's pretty magical what these systems can do and what the machine learning can do at this point in time. Um, but uh, we, our systems, and, and we've announced a number of these uh, big milestones, uh, first in industry milestones, but they autonomously hitch to trailers. And this is not a modified trailer. This is a trailer left by an over the road human operator that leaves it at a yard. We can autonomously hitch to these trailers. Uh, we have deep learning based robotic arms that connect the airlines that release the brakes on the trailers. Uh, we can maneuver those trailers in mixed yard environments with both human and autonomous other vehicles operating around them. We can back those trailers with centimeter accuracy. Uh, and all of these movements are controlled via web-based uh, uh, platform that connects with the warehouse management and transportation management systems of our customers. So it's really important. You just covered, I think, three of the four things that you've done. The fourth one, which is actually probably the earliest one you thought about, but just announced, it was the one that we had fun with in the headline with the dude, where's my truck? And that you can find yeah. it, Outrider can find it. But uh, this whole idea of locating uh, uh, tractors on the yard, uh, preventing the idea of having to have either people walking or driving to find a trailer and things like that. Why don't you talk a little bit about that, since that's your newest thing. Yeah, that's great. And just like you said, this is something that we uh, uh, developed uh, technology around in the very early days and just recently launched it. But essentially, in order to do the autonomous things that we do in a yard, we have these very complex sensor suites on, on the vehicles. Um, and these sensors can be used to maneuver the vehicle around the yard, but they can also be used to make sure we have perfect understanding of the assets in that yard. So we launched our inventory capability where essentially we can uh, real time update what's in the yard, where things are placed and, uh, and be able to communicate that to the people inside the warehouse and the people driving on the road. And this drives incredible efficiency into the system. Uh, so you can imagine on a busy day in a distribution yard, an over-the-road operator will be given a, a place to park a trailer. There might be something else in that spot. They'll have to place the trailer somewhere else. That means someone else is, is therefore having to search for that trailer. Every time our yard truck passes through the yard, it uses cameras and machine learning to update a digital uh, inventory of those trailers, providing perfect information. What this means is, uh, when you're an over-the-road operator coming into the yard to pick up a trailer, uh, you no longer have to search the yard. You can be told right where it is. Or even better, Alan, uh, when an over-the-road uh, driver is coming in, the transportation management system can feed that into the outrider system, and the autonomous outrider system can send an electric vehicle to autonomously move that trailer up to a staging area right near the front of that yard so that we can save 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes of an over-the-road truck operator's time because we can place that trailer that they're looking for right where they want it so they can drop off a trailer, pick up a new one, and get back on the road. Okay, so we've got the whole package, right, Andrew? I mean, pretty much, I don't know if there's any more announcements coming or just improvements to what you've done, but you basically have the package. You've got something that, uh, I don't know if you'd like this terminology, you're kind of in a bubble. You come into the yard, everything's autonomous. How many places right now, and you'll know why I'm asking this, how many places does this really exist? Obviously, in Colorado, where you are, you know, at your, your testing yep. center, um, Georgia Pacific, yes, most of it or all of it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So yeah, let me, let me, yeah. So we we uh, uh, at, at this point in time, uh, the easiest way to think about it is we we are under NDA with our customers. A lot of customers see this as a competitive advantage that they're working towards. Um, we have announced Georgia Pacific. Um, I can tell you that uh, our there are do, there are dozens of vehicles uh, that are acting autonomously right now and doing work, we're in the process of hardening our commercial industrial system that will be released next year in a much broader non-pilot way. Um, but we have done, at this point in time, uh, hundreds of thousands of fully autonomous moves with our system. Uh, and we will be releasing the commercial system next year with all of these uh, features that I've mentioned integrated together. Um, on a, a daily basis, just to think about how it is being used in these locations, um, we have uh, systems that have been deployed in the southeast, uh, in Texas, on the west coast, in Colorado, uh, and, and in Illinois. Um, uh, we've gone through multiple iterations of our hardware package. We actually put an announcement out about that. And what will be coming out next year is, is uh, really exciting for the industry. 
when it's time to for someone to buy this, um, how long is the sort of you know to get it up and running in a yard, for example? When when they say yes, I want this and I want all the pieces, you know, how long does it take to do that? Uh, so we are engaging with customers early on so that they can think in advance about where they want this, where it's going to provide the most value. But when it comes down to it, once the actual hardware has been ordered and the hardware gets on the ground, it's a very simple process to integrate these autonomous systems into existing yard operations. And one of the things to think about is unlike a, a big where, you know, multi-million dollar warehouse installation where you're kind of retrofitting the entire warehouse to be autonomous. In the case of the Outrider systems, you can incrementally drop these systems into place, creating more and more autonomy in the yard. So the systems are designed to work side by side with ongoing manual operations. Um, so specifically with the question, uh, in, a, in a couple of days time, uh, we can do uh, mapping of the yard, commission a new vehicle, uh, link the vehicle into the API or ha have customer systems link into the Outrider API to dispatch the vehicles um, and have the vehicle start doing autonomous uh, yard movements in a customer's yard. Now, you mentioned a two-year-old could push the button to start it. What about the training of people to operate? It must be a little longer than that. Little, yeah, so, longer so uh, the, the two-year-old didn't sit still very long, so we just had them press the button. But um, in terms of training, a very simple training, um, uh, and again, it links very much into an existing yard management system or YMS system of a customer. Um, so, uh, uh, so literally someone can use their same dashboard and rather than sending a message out to a tablet or via radio to a yard, a, a yard truck driver, uh, that message gets sent to the Outrider system. What then happens that's sort of the extra magic is there will be an extra screen of the Outrider system where you'll have more real-time visibility of what's happening in the yard. Uh, and if there's ever an issue and, and a, a move mission can't be done, there's very simple tools um, that, uh, that can be used in order to have a visual understanding uh, and real-time understanding of what's happening around the truck because that, that dispatcher or our support network can then patch into a camera to see what's going on. Yeah. The commercialization you described now, you just uh, uh, recently raised $70 million, so $73 million uh, in, I think it was a, a B round or C round. I'm not sure which. Uh, it's I didn't C, yeah. C round, series C. Series C yeah. That makes you unusual uh, among a lot of my guests because this is a very difficult time to raise money. So obviously, people believe that what you've got is something that, uh, you know, can, can, make it through what we're going through right now in the economy. Um, is that amount of money, is that $70 million, $73 million going to uh, do it for you in terms of scaling, or are you going to need some more along the way? So the reason that I think Outrider was attractive to our investor network is because from day one, we have been very heads down, recognizing that you can't just automate the vehicle, you have to automate the vehicle and all the other manual tasks in the yard in order to create this integrated service that creates real value for the customers. And it can't just be cool robotics, it's gotta be durable robotics that meets the industrial needs of these customers. So we've been very heads down, very focused on all these different components that have to come together and very focused on delivering a uh, great ROI to the customers on these investments. And I think that's what really had Outriders stand out in this market environment, that there was you know, a lot of SPAC type of transactions where the technology was further out. Uh, and, and Outriders been very clear about how we can create value in the, in the near term with autonomy and that these yards are a good application for it. Um, we, we haven't announced any uh, additional funding updates from our side, but I'll just say uh, we are just getting started. Um, there are thousands of applications uh, for this first generation product we're starting to launch next year. And, uh, I, but then on top of that, there are more and more functionalities we've identified that we can use our robotics and machine learning and, and AI capabilities to apply to, um, whether that's expanded operations in terminal and port operations, um, as well as shuttle truck operations. So um, I believe there's going to be additional investment dollars coming this way, but right now we're very heads down, making sure we deliver the promise of this in, uh, autonomous yard operations, which was a, a segment that truly, when we announced it in 2000, in, in 2020 and, and, and the work started back in 2017 was a very new field. 
You mentioned it. I was going to bring it up. But did you ever seriously consider a SPAC? Because I'm sure they waved at you. They did. They they waved. I mean, I think I think we were we had a very strong investment backing, um, and uh, we. We, we stayed heads down during a kind of crazy bubble period in the industry. Um, uh, and I think that that's paying off now. No, it sure is. Um, I, I want to ask, too, uh, about something. This is not a backdoor way to, to get at something you can't share. But it seems that having one customer that you can talk about, Georgia Pacific, and, and a lot of other customers, because you claim a, a good number of Fortune 500 companies are, are, are on board, does there come a time when that becomes limiting in terms of scale or because obviously these folks all are looking to make it good for them. So I can understand why they may not want their names used, but does that hurt you in terms of being able to sort of speak to the, the goodness of what you have out there, I guess. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think your audience can imagine any company that is uh, managing lots of large distribution yards are, are either customers or working closely with, with Outrider at this point in time. And, uh, and no, I, I don't think it's a, a big loss to, to list out all the, all the customers. Um, I think uh, what, uh, what we really look for in our early customer engagements are those customers that you know, recognize the new normal, understand that yard operations are going to be autonomous and electric um, and are eager to be uh, partners in making sure that our product development priorities are aligned with theirs. Um, so I, I think our demand for what we're doing has been so significant from the early days of the company um, that there hasn't been a need to, to go broader. Uh, but I, I certainly suspect over time more and more announcements will be made um, as these systems scale up. And, and I, yeah. right now, the customers, uh, I think we've, uh, I think right now, the, the customers with which we work represent 20% of all the yard trucks uh, operating today as we're on the phone. Mm -hmm. What about competition? Do you have any that is significant? I mean, I've heard one or two companies, I think, that talk about something that sounds similar, but do you have any direct competitors at this point? Yeah, so uh, certainly Outrider was the uh, creator of this space, and there have been a few imitators coming into the market. Um, uh, there's been a, a number of companies that tried to do other things and then said, hey, maybe I'll try yard automation instead. And I think our chief operating officer had the best quote, which is, you can't do yard automation as a hobby. Um, it turns out uh, autonomous movement in the yard is as important as the uh, how you release the brakes on the trailer, which is important, is how you manage the inventory in the yard, as, as we were talking about before. So it's really an integrated system. And um, Outrider has very extensive uh, uh, intellectual property and patents being issued on all of these key concepts that had to come together for the yard. Um, and so we expect Outrider to continue to be the leader in this space for, for years to come. Um, so, so, uh, so yeah, competition is always healthy, um, and, uh, and certainly our plan is to, to continue to stay several years ahead of the competition. It, it's always better, I guess, really to crush your competition, isn't it, Andrew? I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> It's always better to uh, we, uh, I'll, I'll repeat again, com competition is healthy. Our intention is to uh, provide uh, unmatched value to our customers uh, way ahead of the competition. Very, very well said. Very well said. Okay. I'm gonna, that, Can I get a political deal? Oh, yeah, that's right. No, you don't have to do that. Um, last thing, I've got about, about a minute left. I, I just want to go back to something you said about other opportunities, other extensions of this, and we need to keep it tight. But yeah. kind of hit that again, would you please? Other opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, in the field of robotics, um, it, again, the technology is magic. And I think one of the biggest disciplines is, is staying focused. So you're creating as much value in the least, you know, in the shortest period of time possible and then build from there. So we have a lot of customers who, as soon as they see the magic of these trucks moving their trailers around the yard, have requested Outrider to add features and functionality as quickly as possible um, to apply it to more and more areas of their operation. Um, and so, uh, so right now we have a huge backlog of projects um, to build up on top of what we're doing. Uh, we're on a you know clear track to really be you know define a category in the industry and build on top of that. But um, examples would be uh, 
where outrider technology really wins because we connect to these trailers, move them in confined environments and have perfect understanding of the inventory is now we don't yeah. just operate, let's say in the intermodal yard, but now we're going back and forth between that yard and a warehouse or between a production sure. facility and a warehouse. So excited. Got to cut you off there. Andrew, great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Folks, next week, we will go back to electrification. We'll be talking, our scheduled guest is uh, Garth uh, Joyce, who's the CEO of Proterra. Proterra is making lots of news these days. And uh, we'll get a chance to catch up with him, talk about batteries and even some electric transit buses. Hope you'll join us for the next show. Thanks for being here today. Have a great week. Check us out online or on the Freight Waves app.